You know, most of Michigan's mental hospitals have been closed or knocked down, but housing people who are mentally ill is still costing taxpayers plenty of money. And their new home is anything but welcoming. Investigator Ross Jones is here now with the very latest installment in our series, Waiting for Disaster. Stephen Carolyn, good evening. People with mental illnesses are literally filling Michigan jails and prisons. They cost the most to house and treat, and they are arrested more than anyone else. Tonight, why we can't afford to ignore them. They are voiceless people. They're not popular. They're, they're just left behind. Behind steel doors and bulletproof glass, this is where you'll find Michigan's leftovers. When most of the state psychiatric hospitals began to close, this became their last best hope. This is where they've been piling up. The state and the federal government have pretty much walked away, in my opinion. Jails have become the dumping ground. In 1997, then-Governor John Engler issued this press release, announcing the closure of Michigan's underutilized state mental hospitals, moving most patients out of the state's 16 facilities and into the care of providers in the community. It was a transition away from institutions and into care that offered more freedom. Engler promised it would be humane and smooth. 17 years later, judges and law enforcement say it was neither. I voted against the closing of Lafayette Clinic in the city of Detroit. I voted against the closing of Clinton Valley here in Pontiac. That wasn't going to make the, the issues go away. It was going to send it elsewhere, and here's where it ended up. Since the hospital started to close, Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard says the number of mentally ill inmates in his jail has more than tripled. Men and women picked up for usually minor offenses like trespassing or disorderly conduct. In Wayne County, it's the same story. Jail's chief, Jerry Hurd, says these inmates cost the most to treat and return most often. Many of these inmates are frequent flyers. They will return to the jail through rearrest four or five times a year. About everyone agrees that jails have become the biggest home for the mentally ill since most state hospitals closed, except the man who closed them. Michigan kind of led the way. He is James Haveman, the director of the Michigan Department of Community Health. Has jails become the new mental health hospital? I don't believe that. Are there people in jail who are mentally ill? Yes. Are there people who have committed crimes who belong in jail? who might have a mental health issue, yes. I'm just really shocked that he said that to you. In your view, it's not even a debate. It's not a debate. There's not even, it's not a debate in the national organizations. Part of the rationale for closing the state hospitals, they were just too expensive. And while the state has shifted much of the cost off their books, counties say it's been absorbed by them. Since 2002, one inmate alone in Wayne County has been arrested 59 times, spending more than 800 days in jail and costing taxpayers more than $130,000 just to keep him here. These are, there are folks in jail who don't need to be in jail. They need to be in treatment. In Wayne County alone, the numbers are hard to fathom. Over just the last five years, the number of mentally ill inmates that have been arrested at least three times totals more than 3,000. The cost to house them, nearly $95 million. More than 900 have been locked up at least 10 times. For most, their biggest crime, says the chief, is being sick. That's an astounding number. Yes, it's not only an astounding number, but it's also extremely expensive to the taxpayer. But there have been success stories. Over the last few years, some counties have created mental health courts, special dockets that focus only on the mentally ill who have committed crimes, diverting them to treatment instead of jail. In Wayne County, one study says it saved taxpayers over a million dollars, but judges say while well, it addresses a symptom, it ignores the disease. We took people who were unable to function out in the world and just tossed them out with no support system. And, and then we're surprised when they misbehave, act inappropriately, get arrested, take them to jail. The average cost to house an inmate in the Wayne County Jail is $165 a day, but inmates with a mental illness typically cost much more. Tonight at 11, our reports continue. Doctors said 20-year-old Casey Foley needed to be cared for at a state mental hospital. For 13 years, he was, until a jury was convinced he could take care of himself. So he got out on a Friday, and he was dead on Saturday. Yes. Saturday night, Sunday, early Sunday morning, he froze to death. You don't take somebody that's been incarcerated for that long and just put them out on the street. Part four of our investigation airs tonight on 7 Action News at 11. This is such a big issue, Russ. Is there any place or agency where families can go if they need help or you know, are they just out of luck? There have been, it's, it's such a large system that it's so easy for information not to get communicated. There have been some laws created in the last 10 years that were supposed to make it easier to get care. There are laws that almost no one is using. 
That's actually our story tomorrow at 6. But it, it, there's not just one thing wrong with this. There's dozens and dozens of things. Wow. So we look forward to your story tomorrow and tonight on Action News at That's 11. Right. All right. Thanks, Ross. Uh,